deja vu is because we actually did something very similar uh, when we were co colleagues at uh, a great company called Gradle mm -hmm. uh, that do awesome t-shirts yeah, uh, company right exactly and and um, uh, check out the interviews that we did for Gradle it's called the build proportion lab uh, mm -hmm. and now a new iteration a new setup a new name um, same same faces I guess um, uh, tax care is the company that brings you the verbose mode we also have pretty awesome t-shirts uh, mm -hmm. and uh, um, so, uh, Oleg, you are um, head of community and developer advocacy. Uh, that's the title that I consider you. I don't know what's written in your contract, but it also doesn't matter. Um, mm -hmm. In uh, Gradle uh, and specifically Gradle Build Tool. Exactly. And we have a robust mode there. Yeah, so uh, tell me a little bit. Um, I, I guess every developer knows Gradle and has opinions about Gradle. Um, I, I think. The, the interesting question is what's what's new with Gradle? I thought there is this way, the new thing that called declarative Gradle and what's not. Tell us a little bit what's going on with Gradle Build Tool. Yeah. Well, first of all, everything I say today, we have a public roadmap, which is one of news actually. We released public roadmap uh, about two years ago. Now it's uh, up to date and you can check the developments there. There is a few key ones. As Baruch said, there is declarative Gradle. It's a new way to define builds, which is basically a subset of Kotlin, they said. And uh, the main objective is to provide the better compatibility and also portability of Gradle builds. Because I'm not sure how about you, but every time I join in a new company, I see Gradle builds, and all of them are completely different. And this is also what we want to address. Oh, I uh, I have oh sorry uh, uh, do, do, do wrong buttons mm -hmm. here we go yeah um, I have a deja vu we've been here before yeah. and uh, when we come to a new company and and they have a almost the same build scripts but not really it takes me back uh, twenty years ago to the days of Ant mm -hmm. uh, and and how Maven changed everything yeah. the great thing about Maven is that it's a project comprehension tool all or almost every project written in maven looks almost exactly the same yeah i mostly agree it's five percent like yeah yeah okay but no we're talking about 80 yeah. 20. this is obviously not the case with with gradle and th this is what makes working with gradle so frustrating for so many folks and moreover it gets makes it frustrating to work with modern world because as you talked uh, today a lot of projects are switching to ai more and more and it also means that build tools are switching to ai oh uh, my god and what can to... possibly go wrong exactly when you train uh, build uh, to well uh, generative ai on the data based on multiple gradle projects it might be uh, quite interesting and it's actually one of the topics we're looking at how to make uh, generation of uh, build tools uh, better so hopefully I will have some updates soon. Uh, but yeah, declarative Gradle is a part of this vision because making uh, builds simpler and more consistent also makes it possible to do better automation. Uh, like for example, depend the bot for Gradle would and, be nice and, to have. And better verification. And better verification, uh, plus better generation, better comprehension by developers. And hopefully developers won't need to spend uh, so much time uh, going forward with build tools. And it's part of our vision actually. I was advocating for something like that, mm -hmm. that I called in my mind, the enterprise mode for, for, for Gradle for, for many years. And my main motivation was developers want to specialize in what they want to do mm -hmm. and what they're good with it, and that's writing code. Mm -hmm. Builds, like other concepts which are adjacent but not exactly the same, is a complicated system that developers don't want to learn. I agree. Most of build tools these days, they are frameworks. We are afraid of using this term, but yeah, that's uh, the reality. If you use Jenkins, it's a framework. If you use GitHub Actions, it's a framework. If you use Gradle, it's a framework too. And what normally big enterprises do, they have a developer productivity team or whatever it's called, and they try to consolidate it at least for their projects. And you can be very successful, but it requires quite a lot of resources. So making this process unified and straightforward. Like a declarative Gradle would do would be one of the biggest deliverable for us as a ecosystem. So uh, 
this we see consistently all over again, right? Yes. We have uh, specialized teams mm -hmm. that supposed to take off the developers this headache mm -hmm. of doing something that is adjusting but not exactly what they want to do with mixed results. Because, for example, for build, while you can have a team that will uh, be successful in uh, doing managing the build for the entire company, there is actually a problem that eventually the developers will become dependent on this team and it will slow, it down, uh, slow them down. If I want to add a dependency mm -hmm. and I need to go to a specialized team with a process to add this uh, freaking dependency, this is going to slow me down and this is not a great way to write my code. It's still a question of culture because if you have developer productivity team, it's basically the same I have again, DevOps team or development teams. These are cultures. Uh, if you consolidate them and all the processes within one team, you are doing it wrong. So, exactly. So exactly. what we need is developer productivity programs team that provides advisory, subject matter experience, probably some common tooling, but uh, we still need to empower the teams and engineers to do the development. So we need a platform engineering team for those cross-cutting concerns, and mm -hmm. then we need their ambassadors in the teams themselves that will help the developers do it. This is how we do uh, DevOps, yeah. uh, but, but this is how we should do DevOps. Uh, um, but also, mm -hmm. simplifying the tools as much as possible will help. Yeah. If I'm as a developer can read the build and understand the project, the burden for those platform teams will, of course, uh, lessen. Yeah, uh, that's uh, one of the goals. And moreover, the same goes not to just build, but to test it, because developers also don't want to do testing. The, and many other two uh, areas that are inherently a part of the engineering. These days, uh, we spend too much time on support efforts compared to actually developing our products. I don't suggest white coding the whole products, ignoring tests, etc. But at the same time, I really want developers to focus on delivering value, not uh, on deliver, doing automation, builds, tests, etc. And more we do in the area of developer tools to support that, uh, well, helps uh, the team us to deliver on this goal. Yep, absolutely, that makes sense. And this mm -hmm. is really simplifying those tools so they will be approachable for developers is obviously the, the end goal. Um, one thing that you cannot really simplify mm -hmm. is obviously security uh, because um, no, it's, it's the same problem, right? It's, a, it's an adjusting domain, but it's so complicated that the developers don't have the time or the um, uh, maybe passion to, to, to learn it. And mm -hmm. while build, for example, can be simplified to an extent, security really can't. Yeah, let me partially disagree with you. Okay. Because you still can simplify security. There are uh, tools, scanning tools, uh, there are builds of materials, uh, there are tools that allow you to organize dependency management at least. So you, it doesn't become a kind of wild west across your organization. But then, once you have all the build of materials, all the security monitoring, this is actually when a dedicated team or some service uh, that make help but uh, you still need funny, to funny you mentioned the service that might help. Taxcare yeah. right here is exactly mm. the service you can help with that. So nice. we we provide the um, aspirin for this headache of a managing, uh, making sure that all your binaries that you have in your SBOM are actually up to date and patched with, with the latest security patches. For example, here at Spring IO, we um, present our um, endless support for Spring, even if you are on the older version that you might not have a, a security patch available from the uh, framework, you can still get it from us. And to make it efficient, you still need to follow the best practices, right? Absolutely. Because if you don't have a bill of materials, I think that uh, you are for a very big journey, whether you have support or not. Absolutely, because if you don't know what you use, mm -hmm. you cannot get what you need to patch it. Right? There, exactly. there is ways around it. Uh, and modern build tools is exactly the solution. If uh, they will, you can generate or you can get the list of what you use by introspecting what build tools are doing, but it's definitely something that 
going back to our original case, you need to understand how your build tool works and what it does in order to, uh, to do that. And here is where the developer relations that you do in Gradle is so important because this is about how well people can understand how Gradle works and what it does. Yeah, and it's not just about Gradle, but also, for example, if you do Java development and learn development, there is a lot of literally shady things going on, like shading. <laughs> because shading, you take something from the internet, you relocate artifact IDs, group IDs, and then uh, you hope that tools will somehow catch it. Without proper tooling, without proper management, uh, it's not going to go right. And uh, what you need to do is uh, check out the tools, check out uh, uh, your dependencies, and actually streamline a generation of all dependency trees with transitive dependencies, relocations, and it's quite a complicated uh, process. Uh, in Gradle, you have some tools out of the box that uh, provide you with a dependency tree. Uh, even uh, guessing relocations is possible uh, most of the time. So, yeah, just be careful with what you use too, not just build tool. Absolutely. Expertise, that's what we spoke about. And while you might not have the deepest understanding on how build processes or security works, you really need to get on the, your T-shape. You really need this T, to, the, mm -hmm. the, the top part, to be wide enough in order to know what you don't know and then delegate to expert, being it build tool or being it security or anything else. Mm -hmm. With that, Oleg, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. It was a great uh, pleasure to host you. Mm -hmm. And uh, for you all, if you are watching us on X, uh, make sure to switch to our YouTube channel because mm -hmm. this is where we're going to stream today those interviews all day. We have, I think, at least like 20 scheduled for, for today. That's so it nice. will be tons of interesting content. We won't spam you anymore on X, so make sure you switch to our Talkscare uh, YouTube channel. It's, it sounds exactly like, uh, like it's, uh, it's written exactly as it sounds, and uh, we will see you there uh, very, very soon. Oleg, thank you very much. Thank you tomorrow, and enjoy the conference. Bye.